Hey, what's going on, everybody? Nick from Comic Culture here. We're going to do another key comic book flip through. This time we're going to do Tomb of Dracula, issue number 10, first appearance of Blade. Now, this is actually from July of 1973. This is a rather old book. It's in very, very beat up condition, so I'm going to be pretty gentle with it, or as gentle as I can, so I don't uh, uh, pull away from these staples here, which it's bound to do uh, eventually. So, Right off the bat, we're going to take a look at this cover right here. And I got to say, it's a pretty awesome cover. I keep on saying this, and it's uh, relevant for this one too. I love when a cover is actually relevant to the story itself. As we get into this, you'll see how this cover aligns. We basically, we're on this kind of like a ship. And the only way I can really tell that initially is because we have a little porthole right here. We have Dracula. We have a damsel in distress. We have our Blade character ready to go. Drop the girl Dracula, or this wooden knife will finish you off forever. So pretty cool cool awesome little introduction right off the bat on this cover but let's get into the actual pages here and see what is going on so again as you can tell my staples are not doing very well they're barely hanging on so we're going to get into this the opening scene right here is basically going over this uh, shipment container we have this couple that's newly married heading uh, into america so the parents won't stop them something like that they're on the run right now and they're actually attacked by these vampires right here flying in in the form of bats and so they are quickly outnumbered and outmanned but then blade comes to the rescue and i like his first appearance in here because it's like a giant uh two-thirds of a page right here and it's this real dramatic shot they call me blade blade the vampire killer and of course he's all decked out with his knives and stakes and things like that and he is ready to kick some ass jumping right into the action right here taking on a couple of vampires I love this panel right here, jumping on the back of one of them and stabbing him right in the back with his teak wood knife. So we get to see that a lot here. Some of the vampires seem to get the upper hand right away, but he's able to give him the quick elbow, get him off of his back quickly and taking care of some of the other vampires. Some of them try to turn into bats and actually fly away, but dude, he's jumping right at them, wrestling them right down to the ground, which I think is awesome. And then giving them the stab, taking care of those as well. This is just a cool scene right here, seeing Blade leap off of these canisters, these garbage cans, whatever they are, and tackling a bat in midair only to stab it to go ahead and take care of that bat right there. And then you can see it slowly transform back into a human. Of course, then out of nowhere, we have Harker showing up saying like, oh my God, I can't believe you just killed this teenager. But Blade's like, dude, that teenager was a vampire. I don't care how old he was, man. I am here to take care of those bloodsuckers. And that's exactly what I did. He's actually hoping that Blade will join the team at some point, um, leaving some dialogue here saying like, man, he would be a really valuable addition to our cause, but that's going to be something we're going to have to deal with at another time. The rest of this book takes place actually on this weird like cruise ship. It's out in waters where like there's really no laws, a bunch of celebrities, actors, actresses, things like that, really high profile people go out and they get into all kinds of trouble right and so they can get they can get away with doing whatever they want to do it's kind of like a big pleasure cruise and so that's where we are right here the host actually has a surprise guest for the group here and we are going to see who that is momentarily we have this servant kind of guy coming out and he introduces count dracula and everyone's like oh my god it's wow i can't believe it wow he really pulled off all the stops so magnificent things like that i'm just like dude if i was on the ship and count dracula showed up i'd be pretty concerned but everyone seems to be like really into this guy all the ladies of course are flocking to him and he's kind of dispelling all these supposed rumors like well, aren't you a bloodsucker it's like no that wasn't me that was somebody else a long time ago and go oh, can you fly no that wasn't me that was something else it's more like a blood disease don't worry about it but he's already starting to charm and hypnotize people slowly as he meets them and then eventually he kind of says you know what i'm going to retire it's been a long day nice meeting you all i'm going to go back to where i came from specifically targeting the owner of the ship's uh, wife right here or girlfriend whoever that might be but he's going to go back retire in his own quarters waiting for someone to come his way fall for his trap and of course the lady that we met earlier today definitely falls for it and she gets attacked and he goes ahead and feasts on her of course leaving his servant here to watch over her and he's going to go go on to the next stage of his plan right now which is to attack this ferry boat operator right here now we see our little captain right here and he's got a cool little backstory he was found at sea and he says he's going to die at sea as well he has more time spent at sea than on land pretty cool little backstory very very brief but here comes our dracula character knocking him out and eventually possessing him later 
as we see. So Dracula makes the boat come to a screeching halt and all of our members get thrown about. Then of course Dracula goes back out to confront our guests right here and some of them are not taking kindly to this. Some of them pull out guns, try to shoot him, telling him you're not going to possess us, we're not going to take your orders, anything like that. Here, eat this bullet here. But of course our Prince of Darkness, Lord of Darkness, Dracula, says you actually believe that toy can hurt Dracula? Nope cannot hurt him one bit takes our old man right here who is kind of the one that stood up in the crowd against dracula and throws him overboard to his death which i thought was a pretty gruesome thing to do right here but a pretty co cool storytelling moment here of course we see our guy hit the waters right here and then we see another boat creeping up into the shadows we actually have blade in his wetsuit kind of like Black Manta style dude, just jumping into the water, swimming a couple of hundred yards with all of his gear and his wetsuit, his tank and things like that, creeping up on the boat to board it and take on Dracula himself. So he's climbing up like mountain climbing style. He gets on board, does a quick dress change. Then we have Dracula over here, basically giving them two different options. You can either become my slave or you can become the living dead and be bloodthirsty forever. Basically freezing our guests in fear at the moment. And then we get this one Christian up here with his cross trying to weaken Dracula with that artifact there. And it seems to be working because he gets a little bit overpowered here. Everyone starts jumping on top of them. Get, they get knocked out of the gaze that they're under right now, that lock of fear, and they all start attacking him, pushing him down to the ground. So he's becoming overpowered right now. And this is where his servant actually hears the call for help, but he's supposed to be watching over this girl that they met earlier. So he's kind of in the middle of this, like, oh my God, do I get up and help him? Do I leave the girl behind? He's going to get mad, but he could get killed, stuff like that. So he's still contemplating what to do when we have our giant whack Right here, the lady actually woke up and beat him on the head with this lamp, basically possessed, saying that she has to get to her love, Dracula, I will come to you, I will come to you. So we do flash back to Dracula basically being overpowered by the crew members here with the cross. He actually turns back into a bat to get out of the way, get, get to safety, and he quickly reminds us that he gave him this ultimatum, humans, now give me your answer. Do you want to live in servitude or you want to be the living dead? And of course, this is when our Blade character makes his appearance right here. The answer is never of course dracula does not like that i owe you blade for what you did to my three soldiers they were really good men things like that and i'm going to take it about re revenge on you so we get this really cool little fight scene here where basically dracula is turning back into his bat form swooping down blades jumping out of the way things like that he's actually using his bat transformation ability in his fighting style which i think is pretty cool trying to get the upper hand but you know blade is very resourceful as well able to take dracula's blows you think he's down quick kick to the stomach and dracula is actually quite surprised by this person's ability to blade's ability to not only take a beating but also deliver one back and so we're going to see in the next coming pages over here dracula is kind of underestimating blade in a way dracula goes for a final attack right here blade jumps out of the way just in time what you moved kind of surprised by his speed again he's falling off of the boat quickly turns back into his bat form back onto the attack with blade getting the upper hand yet again grabbing blade from behind holding his hand that's holding the knife right now stating there blade you dare call yourself a vampire killer the one you have sought to kill has you now so blade's in a pretty bad way right here but luckily lady comes over here the one that's infatuated with dracula right now she's a newly turned vampire coming over to to dracula's aid presumably distracting him from the battle with Blade. He's trying to get her to get away so she won't be messing around while he's trying to attack Blade and then Blade actually escapes his grasp, but that's okay because our Dracula character has had just about enough of this entire situation, claiming that he's going to blow up this entire boat here momentarily. And that's exactly what leads up into here. The captain he possessed earlier actually detonates some explosives and everybody jumps out of the boat just before then. So. Pretty cool book right here. Blade was all up in this issue the entire time, which I thought was really awesome and really enjoyed that. Amazing cover, amazing story. I like Blade's attitude, his abilities, everything like that. Took on Dracula in his first appearance and lived to tell the tale. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you thought about Tomb of Dracula issue number 10 down below in the comments. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Check out the join button and slap that like button as well. As always, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you all down below in the comments.